You are the daughter of immigrants, mm -hmm. a sitting member of Congress, a woman of color. Mm -hmm. How do you view President Trump's tweets? I think it's un-American. Un-American. Um, uh, it is unbecoming of the President of the United States. I think it, it defiles the office of the President of the United States. Um, it is irresponsible. It is hateful. It is hurtful. And um, he has taken the presidency to a new low. It's personal for you as well. You just shared a story here in Davenport, Iowa, about being told to go back to where you came from? Can, can you share this? Of course, but it's not one time. I've, who have, many of us have been told that. And, when, and, that, and I purposely then at that event asked people to raise their hands. And many hands went up. It is, um, it is for, for the president of the United States, you know, it's one thing to hear it in, in a schoolyard or on the street. It's another thing to hear that from the president of the United States. And this is yet another example of the fact that the current occupant of, of the White House does not understand the responsibility that comes with that office. The President of the United States has a very powerful, powerful voice and tool, which is that microphone. And it should be used in a way that reflects the strength of the office. The strength of the office should be to lift people up and not beat them down. But this president, I, I guess, thinks that he becomes stronger by those who he pushes down. Well, that's not reflective of who we are as a nation. It is not reflective of the values that we have as Americans. It is not reflective of, 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 of our history, much less our, our, our vision for our future. But do you take this personally as a daughter of an immigrant? You have written about how... I take it you... personally as a member of the United States Senate. If we could turn to what the four members of Congress urged for people who are listening to not get distracted. Mm -hmm. How do you not get distracted? How do you not fall into his trap where he controls the narrative with a tweet like this? I've said it many times. I, this president purposely, I believe, distracts and attempts to distract by flamethrowing. Because the reality of it is, is he has done nothing to help working families in America. He passed a tax bill benefiting the top 1% and the biggest corporations of our country. He has conducted trade policy by tweet in a way that farmers are looking at bankruptcy and auto workers are looking at the potential for their jobs to be gone by the end of the year. The American consumer is paying $1.4 billion more a month and everything from shampoo to washing machines because of his so-called trade policy, which I call the Trump trade tax. And he has not done anything to build up the infrastructure of our country uh, it, and, and all that comes with that in terms of improving and elevating the condition of working families. And, and so what does he do? He wants to distract by, by, by starting a, a, a whole, lighting fires around the issue of race and ethnicity. It, it's disgusting. Is this a turn? Do you, there's so much rage about this. Is this a turn for you? There is so much that is disgusting about this. I think it is a turn for this president. That it, it, Could it get any worse? Apparently, yes. It just did. How low can he go? Can he get lower? I don't know, but he needs to go back where he came from and leave that office. And so that's why I'm running with the intention of making sure there will not be four more years. I don't think that we can survive having a president in the United States who, who uses whatever voice he has in a way that is about dividing and fueling hate in our country. The American people will not tolerate that. I know that. I know who we really are as a country. The American people will not tolerate this kind of hate from their president. I want to turn to the issue of health care. Yeah. At the beginning of the year, in January, you talked about you were fine with getting rid of it all. And then you indicated that there was a place 
for private health insurance, and then the debate where you raise your hand, understanding that you say you misheard the question. So let's. But there's be, um, a lot that you're building into this sure. question that's not accurate. <laughs> well, there's. I, I, I would like the, to just get to the point, the, but there there's a lot the, that you're building the, the into the question that's the inaccurate. The impression <laughs> that people are left with is they're not quite sure. So let's clear it up. Okay, good. From where you are, yeah. tell me your position on what Medicare for All sure. means under a President Harris. Sure, Medicare for All means that everyone will have access to health care and cost will not be a barrier. As it relates to private insurance, there will still be supplemental insurance. But yeah, getting transitioning into Medicare for All will at some point um, re reduce the requirement for insurance because everyone will have access to health care. Under Medicare for All, and my vision of Medicare for All, people will have covered what they don't now in terms of vision care, dental care, hearing aids. I'm here with a bunch of seniors in Iowa, and hearing aids are extremely expensive and not covered by Medicare right now. Um, Medicare for All means that, that you recognize that right now in America, 91% of our doctors are in Medicare. So you're not going to have to lose your doctor. It is very unlikely. It means, it means recognizing that over a period of many years, the, the insurance companies have been jacking up the cost of health care in terms of premiums, deductibles, and co-pays. So that right now, someone who has insurance coverage will still be out of pocket $5,000 because that's their deductible, which for most Americans is unaffordable. The role of private insurance are you limiting that to something like cosmetic insurance? Or what is the exact role well, of private it, insurance? To cover what is not otherwise covered. And so that includes what? Very little, because almost everything will be covered. Almost everything will be covered. And here's the important piece. We've got Medicare for all right now. And you know what that is? It's the emergency room. And it is extremely expensive for the American taxpayer and also it's a system that basically means that people have access to health care when they're in crisis. How a smart you... system will not require people to be in crisis before they have access to health care. So then how does this plan differ from what Senator Sanders is proposing? I, I think that they, they're very similar. I don't know that they're, I mean, I, I don't think that, I'm, I'm supporting his bill. So to the extent that he's talking about his bill, I don't know what else he's talking about. Uh, you said, uh, just I mean, I'm not in support of, of middle class um, families paying more taxes for it. You know, and that's so. what I actually was hoping to talk to you yeah. about. You just said that, that uh, you were not in favor of a middle class tax hike. Yes, correct. How do you propose to pay for your version of Medicare for All, if it resembles what Senator well, Sanders is proposing. Well, part of it is going to have to be about Wall Street paying more. It's going to have to be about looking at how we and what we tax in terms of financial services. That's part of it. But the other part of it is to understand that this is about an investment which will reap a great return on the investment. Um, we can't only look at this issue in terms of cost without thinking about benefit. The benefit to the American public will be that people will have access to health care that right now they cannot afford. And we are all paying a price for that. Now, Senator Sanders says that that is impossible to achieve without a middle class tax hike. I'm not prepared to engage in a middle class tax hike. The rules have been written against middle class and working families for far too long. And it is not necessary that they be taxed even more to achieve what is achievable. Um, by recognizing that, the, that they don't have to actually pay more to receive a benefit that they deserve, which is access to health care. But in many studies, study after study shows it would cost approximately $30 trillion over a decade to pay for this. So taxing Wall Street will reap $30 trillion to, in, in order to cover this? What we're doing right now is unaffordable to so many American families. And the idea that we're going to go down and this, this, this uh, level of analysis that suggests that status quo is okay is completely unacceptable. 